I am Peter Piot and I'm the director of the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine and at the moment confined a home in London. Welcome to The China Current with me, James Chow. Professor Peter Piot has used his life to bring science to the people. He's transformed the world and given us the chance to live and with purpose. He co-discovered Ebola in 1976, the year it first appeared in what was then Zaire, followed by research and leadership on HIV and AIDS. His book, No Time to Lose, documents this extraordinary journey, but it now has an update after Peter was infected with COVID-19 and continues to live with the longer-term consequences of a disease we're beginning to understand. On a personal note, he brought me into AIDS and global health, and more importantly, he has done the same for many more young people whose lives today are a testament to his. So it really is an honor for me to bring you this conversation with Peter Piot. Peter, thank you very much for your time. And I think what I would like to know first and what the world would like to know first is how are you? It's been a harrowing couple of months for you. You were in treatment, you came out of hospital, supposedly recovered, but you've spoken a lot about the aftershocks of this. How, how do you feel now? At the moment, I feel actually much, much better. It's the first time in three months, actually, that I, uh, you know, I can breathe properly when I uh, go on the stairs. I, I went jogging this morning. That's also new. Um, but it's been a, a, a really rough time. And particularly uh, after the, uh, the very lonely seven nights in the hospital, where I was uh, really very scared to uh, uh, end up in intensive care afterwards, I thought it was over. But then I developed these complications of uh, a, uh, you know, a reactive type of pneumonia because of the um, hyperimmune response. You know, the body overreacts to the virus and cause a lot of problems in the lungs. And that's far more uh, difficult to, uh, to get over with. So it's not just like uh, uh, some kind of bad flu or, uh, you know, or 1% of people who die and then often it's said, oh, and it's they're over 70, like me, uh, or have pre-existing conditions as if we were not full citizens in society. I'm sure that you were taking the precautions that you needed to before, is there any picture now on how you became infected in the first place? Yeah, I thought a lot about it, uh, particularly more recently. I didn't shake hands, uh, but it was before uh, the UK went into lockdown. Um, although at the London School of Hygiene, Tropical Medicine, um, we closed this, the school and went working remotely before uh, the government made it compulsory. So uh, the days before I uh, developed my illness, you know, before it started. Um, I, I was already at home just with Heidi, my wife. But before, you know, as you know, I, I have a pretty active social life also as the director of the, of the university and, um, you know, uh, giving talks, uh, ironically, about COVID-19 and epidemics, you know, meet with students um, and, uh, and had dinners every night. So, uh, it was clearly not enough to, uh, in terms of precautions. You've spoken and written very movingly about those seven days in hospital. In fact, I think we emailed while you were on the way to the hospital from your house in London. When you look back at that time, what was that journey like to the hospital? You know, I decided to go to the hospital because I became confused. Um, and I had a hard time to even get out of bed, which is not my type. Although on the day um, that I started the, the illness, I had worked, uh, you know, I even gave an interview with Christiane Anampur on CNN. So I'm the kind of person who continues to work, but that was clearly a, a mistake. And so when it got really out of hand, I said, okay, we go to the emergency room. It was also uh, after some initial exams and where they found that my uh, oxygen saturation, which is an indicator of how well does the blood, you know, absorb the oxygen from the air from your lungs, was very, very low. They put me immediately on oxygen support. 
And uh, they found that I had bacterial pneumonia based on chest x-ray. And then I was put in a, an isolation room together with three men and uh, who all suffered from the same thing. And, uh, and that's where we then, you know, for seven days, you're not allowed to have any visitors. You can't leave the room, uh, but it's oxygen that saved my life. And, uh, um, and also, for, of course, the fact that they could treat uh, bacterial pneumonia with antibiotics. At what point did you feel that you were moving between, as you've called it yourself, between that state of heaven and earth? First of all, um, as soon as I entered the emergency room, I switched from being a doctor to become a patient. And um, I didn't try to second guess what the doctors would do and so on. And, and in any case, I was too exhausted. It's like you're hit by a bus going you know, out of bed, going to the toilet, just eating. It's all too much. Um, and so that was the fundamental uh, switch. Um, and it's like, and then it takes a bit of a while, you know, to realize, oh boy, I'm here in total isolation. And uh, the only people you see are the caregivers, nurses who do the fantastic job. Um, and I think some of them were as scared as I, as I was because they're exposed to uh, people who are infectious. And so, and my biggest concern was that I would end up on a ventilator. Some people send me messages Yes, you're a strong person and you're fit and healthy, and it's true. I've never been uh, seriously ill in my whole life. I said, but there's nothing I can do. What can I do? This is not a matter of strong will or, you know, or being strong. Your body is being taken over by this virus in every cell, and you just hope that it's strong enough to, to react, but not overreact. It's out of control. Your life is not under your control anymore. Well, if there ever comes a day when we can do it safely, I can't wait to give you a huge hug, Peter, because we love you and we want you to get better because the world continues to need you. It's wonderful to see you, James, and hopefully very soon in person. Thank you so much. You can listen to the full conversation with Peter Piot at thechinacurrent.com or your preferred podcast platform. Thank you.